my five years with Bunny and Buttons, we have learned a whole lot about what works and what doesn't. And if you're anything like I was when I started, the process can feel really overwhelming. It doesn't have to be. Anyone can do this. Dogs, cats, and other species of all breeds and ages are having success. And although our community is already tens of thousands strong, I really wanna see more success stories. So I'm gonna break down getting started into four easy steps. Before I do, a quick word about food-related buttons. I don't have any on my board, but that isn't because it's not a great starting word, it's because I didn't want folks saying, she's just pressing buttons for treats. Another reason that I decided not to add a food-related button is because Bunny just wasn't that interested in food. All learners are unique and motivated by different things. So if you are holding in your mind that it's illegal to add a food button, apologies. It is in fact legal and recommended if it makes sense for your crew. So the first step is to decide what words you're gonna start with based on how easy it will be to frequently reinforce them. So how does it work? Whenever a button is pressed, you reinforce that press by doing or giving your learner the thing associated with that button. The more you reinforce, the greater the potential that your learner will understand the meaning of the buttons. It's as simple as that. This is what we call modeling. While it's important to take into account what might motivate your learner, it's equally important to pick things that you, as the teacher, can quickly and frequently reinforce in the beginning right at the board. Our first word was outside. I don't think this is necessarily the best word to start with though. It can be a great word for puppies and dogs who weren't housebroken, but it can also be challenging to model enough times in a day. We recommend starting with two or three buttons. For example, many dogs are motivated by food play and social connection. So starting with your version of the words food play and scritches are a no-brainer. Examples of other words within these groups that you could choose are snack, eat, tug, chase, pets, cuddles, etc. These are all words that you can say yes to many times in a day. And before the buttons even get there, you can conduct some preference assessments with your learner to determine which activities and foods they prefer. You may think that your learner isn't motivated by play, but have you tried tug or chase or a flirt pole? I think you might be surprised by what you find if you experiment a bit. Some learners, for example, may not enjoy frequent touch, and that's totally fine. Maybe you opt for a training button instead. It's still something you can do together, but take some of the physical pressure off. This whole step can be done with your learner before the buttons even arrive. In step two, we'll demonstrate that these buttons have value, build associations, and create a fun routine with our learners that builds connection and curiosity. So, you've picked your first three words, and now what? Rapid stimulus pairing! Or as we call it, say yes to the press. And what is that? Well, it's just jargon monoxide for press reinforce, press reinforce, press reinforce. Step two is about building enthusiasm with no strings attached. Your learner probably isn't pressing buttons themselves yet, but your job is to help them get there simply by pressing the button, saying the word yourself, and responding with the corresponding reinforcement as many times as possible throughout the day. The first couple of weeks can feel a lot like you're playing a game by yourself, but trust me, it'll pay off in dividends and you can start this the second the buttons arrive. If you have a Tupperware of kibble or whatever your learner eats or wants, some toys and yourself near the buttons, it just takes seconds to quickly reinforce any of these presses. Even just five minutes a day can greatly impact learning. That being said, it is fundamental to the process that we allow our learners to opt in and opt out. Letting them engage or disengage will ensure that the buttons become and stay a positive experience for them. We should always respond to and respect nonverbal communication. So if your learner grabs a toy and drops it at your feet, you can take a sec to rapid model play and then just play with them without first insisting that they press the button. This is called capturing. If you notice your learner looking at or exploring the board at all, take that opportunity to do a little rapid modeling session with no pressure for them to engage. We're simply showing them that they have the ability to control our behavior, to produce outcomes. So press reinforce, press reinforce, press reinforce. Some learners will want to engage right away. Others might watch from a distance. All of this is normal and okay. If they look unsure, go at their pace. And if they opt out, we honor that and try again later. If within this process of rapid modeling, your learner makes contact with a button but doesn't activate it, press it for them and reinforce. Keep the rhythm going, keep things light and fun. If your learner activates a button, even if you're pretty sure it was unintentional and even if it was a press that doesn't seem contextually appropriate, take that opportunity to reinforce it. Like if you think they want a snack but they accidentally activate play, reinforce with play. This gives them the opportunity to learn that the play button doesn't lead to the outcome they're looking for at that moment, that different buttons have different outcomes. If we presume competence and acknowledge curiosity and exploration, learners will ultimately have more control and choice leading to more comprehensive communication. Okay, let's talk about some troubleshooting tips for this step. What if my learner isn't motivated by kibble? Try a different food item. Do they prefer freeze-dried? 
liver, boiled chicken, string cheese? What if they're not motivated by the play reinforcer we've chosen? How about a tug toy or a flirt pole? A game of chase, some personal play? If they don't want scritches, maybe they just want to lay by your side for contact or just hold hands. There can be flexibility and reinforcement while you're determining precisely what your learner prefers. And preferences can change over time, so really listening to what your learner is saying without buttons is foundational. Some learners press on day one, and some take months. This isn't a reflection on their intelligence or of your ability to teach. The most critical factor here is that your learner sees you pressing the button and responding with the corresponding reinforcer as many times as possible throughout the day, and that they care about the words you've chosen to start with. Join me next time and we'll talk about signs that your learner is going to press and how we can further encourage that behavior. So you've been modeling and your learner is showing signs that they're engaged and excited about it. Now what? This is the step where we can encourage a bit more active participation. So how do we do this and how do we know when our learners are ready for this step? Well, here are some things to look out for that may indicate you're ready for step three. Short answer, enthusiasm. Longer answer, does your learner eagerly approach when you start modeling? Do their ears perk up or does their head tilt when they hear certain words? Do they approach the board and wait for eye contact? Do they run from the other room when they hear a button being pressed? Have you been able to assess your learner's preferred reinforcement for each category? Understanding that it can change from hour to hour, day to day. By this point, your behavior observation skills are likely strengthening, which is a super cool byproduct of this process. And hopefully we are seeing eager and enthusiastic opt-ins from your learner. A quick reminder that the buttons are an opportunity to connect and to build a lifelong communicative skill, but not a requirement for your learner. We want to build the understanding that buttons are a tool for our learners to control outcomes. They get to make the monkeys do stuff. Okay, so how do we encourage participation without coercion once we see signs of interested and engaged learners? You can conduct a survey for your learner, pointing to and naming each of the buttons and asking which they prefer. They might answer non-verbally by bringing you the thing or sidling up to you for some scratches, in which case you'd press the button yourself and reinforce. This shows comprehension and is one step closer to a press. You can place an object that you know your learner wants in that moment, like a ball on a table where they can see it and say something like, what do you want? And point to the play button. A good rule of thumb is to count to five in your head. And if the learner hasn't pressed, just go ahead and model the button yourself and give them the ball. Other techniques you could explore are target training to help learners more readily offer a pawing behavior. We have vids in our community hub, or you could teach your dog to point, which can give you more specific information about what things are relevant to them. There's a video tutorial on this here on my page and also on the community hub. You can play, treat, and scritch right at the buttons to increase the likelihood that an accidental press will occur, which allows you to capture and reinforce. It's important to take note here that a lack of pressing doesn't necessarily mean a lack of comprehension. Your learner may just not want that thing at this moment. If we presume competence, we are forced to abandon some of our assumptions about what is relevant to our learners, and we can learn a whole lot. If none of these techniques are working for you, reevaluate your reinforcers, make changes if you have to, then go back to step two for a bit until you're seeing the signs of epic engagement. P.S. There are tons of other troubleshooting tips in the community hub. And if you get stuck, there's an amazing community here to help. Join me next time for tips on next buttons and excited pressers. So now you've got a learner who is pressing buttons all day, every day. It's amazing. And you're thinking, one, this is so cool. What word should I add next? And two, am I supposed to play with her every time she requests play all 237 times per day? And I feel you. And the answer is, that's totally up to you. The good news is communication is extremely resilient to extinction. Think of the toddler who just learned how to say please and is asking to touch every single thing they see at the store. Dad is probably gonna say no 237 times, but that kid is gonna keep saying please. What I'm trying to say here is no. When you have a learner consistently using buttons, you don't have to say yes to every single press. It's a wonderful opportunity to add additional vocabulary and expand their communicative potential. And it can become more of a dialogue. Acknowledge all forms of communication when you can, offer alternatives if you can't meet their requests, and keep modeling, always keep modeling. And the better news is now we get to add more buttons buttons like all done, which we call a session ending button. Other great session ending buttons would be any activity that lowers arousal away from the board, like licky mat, snuffle, puzzle, outside, settle. Again, this will all be specific to you and your learner and your individual relationship. While these words can be harder to rapid fire model, by this time your learner already understands that buttons make the humans do things. So you've likely got their buy-in and learning can occur more quickly. I want to emphasize that while we've seen these guidelines work for a lot of learners, this isn't a one size fits all process. We don't want to be too prescriptive because there are a million paths to success here. If these tips aren't working for you and your learner, don't give up. Reach out. We can help. 
Our community is thousands strong and chances are someone has been stuck exactly where you are and can offer guidance. Check out our incredible community hub, our free button bootcamp, and any of the other amazing resources at your disposal. And please share your successes too. We cannot wait to meet you. You know the drill. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.